It's the families of the two teenagers killed last week in Italy on suspicion that they were armed thugs are asking the government to release the bodies for burial. The father and uncle to Mohammed and Jamal respectively say their kin were criminals, not gang members, but pickpocketers, pickpockets, beg your pardon, who operated within Isli. NTV's Brenda Wonga with that report. It hardly attracts any unwanted attention, but inside this building located deep in the heart of Isili lived one of the boys who met his death last week at the hands of the police, just meters away from his home. Inside the building, Mohammed's family is still railing not just from the deaths of the two young men, but also from revelations about the kind of life they lived. <laughs> Mohammed and Jamal were well known here. Young boys going on to men, but those who strayed from the straight and narrow path and skidded into the depths of the world of crime, starting from the bottom, hoping to make their way up into the moneyed leagues of crime. Amongst those branded as bad company was Mohammed's close friend, 18 year old Jamal. <laughs> He was in Jamal's company when they were accosted by the police and killed. On the day that the two young men met their fateful death, Mohammed's father says that his son left his home for Friday prayers. The next he heard and saw was the news of his death and his lifeless body sprawled out on the streets in Isili. The families of the two admit that the children were not saints but they deny that they were members of the dreaded superpower gang that kills and terrorizes people in the area. Mal was an orphan left to fend for himself after the death of both parents and a grandparent. His immediate next of kin, an elderly grandmother from Tana River. He, according to his uncle, engaged in petty crime to sustain himself. <laughs> Mohammed's motivation to join the underworld of crime is still unknown. His family, originally refugees from Somalia, all live in this house. He would occasionally join them for meal, but hardly lived here, choosing instead to reside in Dandora. The family say they would have liked their young ones apprehended and made to face the full force of the law rather than having them killed like they were. They say their grief is now compounded by the government's delay in releasing the bodies of the deceased for burial in accordance with the Muslim rights. Brenda Wanga, NTV.